Graham. Amazing okay. audience, we are live in New Orleans with Kristen Robinson. How are you Hi. doing? Hi, good. How nice are you? you? Thanks for coming. You're real. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to a picture while on my podcast, and I wonder sometimes, I wonder if this person is real. <laughs> <laughs> are you real? Are you really real? Yeah, are you sir? really real? But definitely you are real. When we spoke, we spoke about a few things, right? You were doing Facebook ads mm -hmm. uh, at that time. You were developing courses at that time. You seemed as though you were so excited by what you were doing in terms of helping people convert audiences very quickly if mm -hmm. i'm not mistaken yeah i'm doing it correctly Am yes I? you are <laughs> All right. so tell me like what's the update what are you what are you doing it's been like almost what a year almost a year oh my gosh for real yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh uh well um right now i just actually announced my new event ads made easy live mm. i'm so excited mm. because um when is it uh, October 26th to 28th, okay. 2018. All right. I am so excited because, you know, when you're, when you're into something, you're always kind of doing the same thing, right? Like, I help people get started with Facebook ads. So it's like, oh, what's your audience? Okay, what's your text? What's your image, you know? And so I never really get to, how you say, cut loose. You know, it's like, I hate to say this comparison, it's like Superman, right? He's super strong, but he knows if he went all out on somebody, he could kill somebody, right? Yeah. And so he just never gets that chance to really cut loose unless it's a very strong opponent, right? So I'm really excited at Ads Made Easy Live that I'm going to finally get to cut loose. I get to talk about all the things that I talk with my colleagues or those seven-figure entrepreneurs or, you know, my, what, my agency clients where I do their, their Facebook ads for their launches. So I never, ever, ever get a chance to talk <laughs> about this stuff in public. I never do because everyone's just like, I just want to get started. Yeah. And so I'm really excited that in, it's actually going to be here in New Orleans. Oh, so this is a live event. Yes, it's a live this event. Is not a live stream no, event. this, this is, is a live sweet. event here in New Orleans where I get to sit down and say, look, let's use Facebook ads to grow your email list. Let's use Facebook ads to fill your online program. Let's use Facebook ads to get those three thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollar clients. Like, let's really use Facebook ads. Put it with some of the things that you have. Look at your funnel and see how we can make these things happen. Because oh, I never get to do that. It's all about okay. Let's put your Facebook ad together, which is fun. Don't get me wrong, but I never really get to that other level with a lot of people. It sounds so. like fun. Now, Thank you. Tell me about the food. Is there going to be food? <laughs> Food. Because I mean, <laughs> New Orleans food is amazing, right? So, little secret, you guys, just a little secret. So the hotel we're ho for first of all, if you ever come to New Orleans, stop at the Hilton Double Tree, the Double Tree by Hilton. If you right. ever do that, okay. Right. Here's why you need to do that. That's where the event's taking place, and they are the only hotel in New Orleans that does beignet, that does chocolate chip beignets. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so okay so think of so beignet is like let's say just a, let's just call it a french version of a donut Ooh. it's like a stuffed little think of a ravioli but tasting really good like oh. in sweet mm. like a sweet ravioli right it's, it's like a little dough thing and with powdered sugar All right but if you go to the french market you can get them stuffed with apple you can get them stuffed with chocolate and you can get them stuffed with um pralines pralines trust me it's good so <laughs> trust, trust me trust me it's good but Double Tree is the only hotel in the French Quarter that stuffs it. It's like chocolate chip beignets. Oh my. And they're doing it as a complimentary thing for my guest at my event. Again, oh my. So, so <laughs> October 26, 28, we might just need to fly out. <laughs> you know, because the event is good. So you're helping individuals and you're excited. Two days is a lot. Three, it's a three day, 26, 27, 28. Three days is even more than two days. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half, we'll get out, you know, Sunday afternoon. And so it's like two and a half days. Are you going to like be bringing it uh, all through the session? So here's the thing. A lot of people, if you've never come to one of my events before, which obviously most of you haven't, um, I don't have any other speakers. It's mm. just me. So for those of you guys going, oh, it's going to be like this pitch-a-thon, but no, 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 no. My events, I always do a standard format where I teach very little. I, te I teach for about maybe 45 minutes, and then I, I answer questions. We do hot seats, and then they get 90 minutes of implementation time. Hmm. So I firmly believe, I hate the, I don't know about the rest of you guys, and I'm sure you've been to these, where you go to these events, and it's just nonstop teaching and teaching. Yeah. You barely write in your workbook, and when you get home, you're like, what am I supposed to do? Hmm. <laughs> right? You're like, what am I supposed to do? 
I don't do those at my events. I have a workbook that you literally write in. It's to work in. It doesn't have my slides. It has basically what you need to do to implement. And you go home and you can go, oh my gosh, this is what I need to do. That sounds great. I love it. I yeah, love they're it. actually workbooks, like meant to work in. Is there a website we can go to find out more? Yeah, it's called adsmadeeasylive.com. I mean, it's super simple for you guys. Adsmadeeasylive.com. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh -huh. That's good. Now, one of the segments we cover is your own unique real shoes. <laughs> and it speaks to shoes that you've worn all through time, right? So <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's start from 1 to 12. What Ooh. type of shoes were you wearing then? Mm. Mm. I, oh, man, what kind of shoes was I wearing? Probably some Nikes. I do remember a pair of Nike, distinct pair of Nikes or Adidas. <laughs> Why were you wearing Nikes back then? Oh, because I'm, I'm an athlete. I'm, I've always liked sports. So, you know, Nike's the ath athletic brand, right? The victory, right? Greek goddess of victory. <laughs> so I'm always about I'm always about that. Like, okay, let's, you know, let's yeah. do this. So 1 to 12, you're, you're the athlete. Yeah. 12 to 24, what are you doing then? Oh, by then I probably switched to some, um, oh, man, what's that brand? Ah, my Nimbus, but I can't think of the brand. Okay, for those of you guys who run, you know what I mean. Like the Cumulus and the Nimbus. All right. So those are like track spikes, shoes. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. They're actually track training shoes. Okay. So I had my first pair of Nimbus, which is like the high level track shoes, right? I'm like, oh my God, they're super expensive. And I was like, <laughs> yes, I got my own pair of Nimbus. Like I bought them myself. So total 24, I was definitely wearing some Nimbus or Cumulus. Really excited about that. Um, probably a pair of soccer cleats in there because I right. played women's professional football. I didn't wear football cleats, y'all. I wore soccer cleats because we women's professional football. We don't play on a professional football field. Of course we don't, right? Mm -hmm. No, we play on soccer fields. So I wear soccer cleats because that, that's what you do. That makes sense. Yes. And that explains the muscles, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have been an athlete in training all my life. <laughs> but I try. I try. Whoop, whoop. I try. <laughs> <laughs> what after, about after 24? Like, what are you wearing then? Okay, so y'all can't see, but I'm wearing some Pumas. Yeah, okay, yeah, Instagram can see. Can see. <laughs> uh, Facebook, sorry, you can't see. So I'm wearing a pair of Pumas right now. Um, oh, what's that guy? The real fast guy from Bolt. Jockey. Yes. So everyone knows Usain Bolt. That's his brand. Yeah. So got to gotta support him <laughs> with Pumas. Um, so, and of course you guys can't see it, but I have a matching Puma purse with my shoes. I'm so excited, <laughs> like, sports has gone into more of a fashion trend. It so it's like, yeah, I can wear my favorite sports brand with a purse, like, uh -huh. and I love it. People go, Puma makes purses? I'm like, oh, of course. Yeah. You don't know, you don't know. And stuff, yeah. When you look back uh, from that time to now, do you have any regrets? Mm, I think, I think I have three specific regrets. Um. I'll admit, in track, I didn't push myself as far as I probably think I could. Um, a lot of people were saying I was definitely Olympic bound. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I was too busy in my 20s having fun. Who thinks about the Olympics? <laughs> right? Like, you're a senior in college. Like, who thinks about that? So I would say that's one regret now. You know, if I would have pushed myself more, I could have done that. Um, the other regret is um, when me and my husband were stationed in Hawaii. So for those of you guys who don't know, I'm a military spouse. We are literally here, not on a real military base, but you know what I mean, we're in government land. Um, but when we were stationed in Hawaii, the one regret was we didn't get to visit the other islands. Mm -hmm. So we only stayed on Oahu. We didn't go to Maui, Kihei, um, the Big Island. My husband went to the Big Island for training, but that's one regret we do have, but we can correct that regret. We can always go visit the other islands. Okay. So that's that. And I would say the third regret is, um, it's like my father passed away when I was 16. So I think for me that regret was, I didn't know how fast he was going to go because um, just a little backstory, my husband was waiting for a kidney, my husband, <laughs> my father was waiting for a kidney transplant and he died two days before the actual operation. Hmm. And so I didn't know it was gonna happen that soon. We were all thinking, okay, operation, transplant, woo. And I think if I would have known, if, if, if I knew then, if I knew now what I knew then, I definitely would have said more words. It was, I mean, I'm not, I guess I don't really regret how it went out. We went out just how we normally would. Like, you know, I love you, daughter. I love you too, daddy, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's if, if, and I know he would have, I'm, I know he wanted it that way for me to live my life, to make things normal as possible while he was gone. Mm -hmm. But if I would have known, I definitely probably would have did more hospital visits and more I love you, but 
I guess that's a, a mid regret. <laughs> a mid regret yeah. because I know that's the way he would have wanted it. So. I remember your earliest childhood memory too was uh, you sitting, uh, standing in the crib when your father yeah. came home. Yeah, that's, that's pretty intriguing. Pictures of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. All right, my friend, uh, what are you most excited about right now? I think I know though. October twenty six to twenty eight. Yes, that and that's one thing. Okay. That's one thing. Um, that's in the business There's life. Something else. That's excited. And my personal life. Um, a lot of people don't know military. We move every three to three and a half years. So hate to break it to you guys, but uh, my time's almost up in New Orleans. <laughs> so literally, like this October event, I might throw another one in April. But we're done with New Orleans events. So if you guys don't come to see me in New Orleans, that's it. But my husband is up for orders, and it's always exciting to see where we're going to go. Wow. But it's, a spe it's very special because he's up for school. Right. So he gets to go to a specialty school for about five or six months, kind of gives us a break of military life, and then we get normal three and a half orders. So he's considered for school in Memphis, Tennessee, the United Sweet. Kingdom, Canada, Australia, one in Kentucky. Like, it's wow. so exciting that we're going to be, and I'll be real with y'all, I am so hoping for Canada or the UK. I'm just yeah. like, oh my gosh! <laughs> think, I mean, think, let's think about this. For five or six months in a country you have never been to, long enough for you to explore everything and long enough for you to go, oh, I missed it, right? That's but amazing. not long enough for you to go, oh, I don't want to be here anymore, right? It's yeah. like just the perfect amount of time to explore. And if we go to the UK, I get to go see all of Europe <laughs> and Canada. I'm, I'm a sports geek, so of course you know I'm going to be going to all the hockey games and all kinds of crazy stuff. Toronto, all that great stuff. Um, yeah, so that's that's probably the two exciting things is we're finally going to the next place. Um, and that's always exciting, the last year we spend somewhere, because it's like bucket list, like what do we do before we leave, right? Mm. So that's always an exciting part of our time is right, we're about to leave somewhere. It's amazing how, how your life has been, uh, uh, cut, like... Periods of three years, yeah. <laughs> my adult life. <laughs> yeah. Three years, three years, three years, yeah. yep. As well as like your appreciation for time from what happened with your father, right? Like you, you're living that in capsules. Yeah, it's people. When you're in the military, you guys like you really just the whole thing of like every day is a moment. It really is because I can think back to March 2000 and oh, I don't even know, but whatever. It, let's pretend it's a nice day in March, and my brother-in-law, who was in the Marines at the time. Um, got orders to go to Afghanistan for 13 months. Hmm. And my mother-in-law was like, okay, you know, my, my, my second boy's leaving, I'm coming down to visit. So she came down to visit, and she'd only been there for about four days. And my husband came in the door, just his head down. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Thinking it was a bad day at work. And he looked at me, he looked at his mom, he's like, mom, he, she's like, what's wrong? And we're, we're just like, all of a sudden he's very serious. He goes, I got orders, I'm leaving in two weeks. And his mm. mom just folded up like a lawn chair. She just started crying mm. because my brother-in-law was leaving next week. And then here was her oldest leaving the week after. Mm. And so I was like, you know, and I told her, I'm like, you know, I know you're crying, but this is, it, be glad that you were here when yeah, both of them well. were here. Like, thank goodness we got the news now. So you wouldn't have to come back a week later. Mm. And so I just, and my, my world just fell apart. I'm just like two weeks, like. You guys will understand, like two weeks, I mean, you got to get your will done because God forbid something happens to my spouse, my husband, mm -hmm. right? So you got to get your will done. Um, he has to write everything over. Tell me how, okay, you know, we, we, I know the financial things, but he likes to do all his bills very specific. So okay. it's like, I pay the bills this way and I have to do it for, I'm thinking t six months, but he ended up being gone for 10 months. So wow. you got to hold the whole household together and y'all lucky we don't have any kids. The kids, oh my yeah. gosh, right? So... Luckily, my father-in-law came down that weekend, and it was just like them trying to get things together, and Kristen, are you all right? And we need to do an emergency care kit for me. Like, what if something happens to me? Hmm. You know, so it's just like lots of stuff, and you have to face that what if he dies kind of thing, and nobody really wants to talk about that, hmm. but it's a conversation that has to happen. And so being in the military, I would say you're grateful for every single day because you just never know when that bomb just drops and says, hey, you know what? <laughs> We're gonna take away your spouse. We're thinking three to six months. It might be longer, we're not sure. And we'll try to return him in one piece. We'll try, we'll try to return him in one piece. And you're just like, mm. but I have to remember that's what he volunteered for. That is his dream. That's what he wants to do is defend our country. And I support him in that. And it, I'm not saying every day is easy, definitely isn't. But some days you do have to face that reality that you know he gave everything he had for the country, you know, so. You appreciate time a whole lot more. 
when you heard that this guy from the Caribbean, all the way from the Caribbean, <laughs> is coming to meet you, what did you think? Wow, what a brave soul. <laughs> 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 what a brave soul. Most people, it's so funny when we move to places to places like Hawaii, there are people who have never left the island, you guys. Like, never left the island. Mm. They have no idea what, what continental United States is like. Mm. So, and we've been to places where they've never left the county. Yeah. They don't even, they haven't even seen the rest of their state. Mm. So for you to be like, I'm going to go to a country that I have no idea. Luckily, they do speak English, right? I speak English. <laughs> Luckily, we all speak the same language. But I'm going to go to a country I know nothing about what I've seen on TV or what I've heard from or what I've seen on the internet. And I meet all these people that I just heard about, like you said, I don't know if they're real, what if they're like killers in disguise, I don't know, right? <laughs> I'm hoping they're all nice. <laughs> I was just like, wow, he is like super brave to take on this thing and just go around the country and- And his wife, right? Yeah, that's why I'm gonna say you guys can't see his wife. And, his, and then I'm sure, let, let's be real, any wife, like, hey honey, I'm gonna go across the country and see these people I've only spoken to. You know, in the back of her mind, she's going, this guy, mm, what is he getting us into? Is this safe? Like, what is going on? And, you know, kudos to his wife. She can't see her. But, you know, thank you for being a supporter, being along for the ride. Because if my husband's like, yeah, we're going to go to the UK and visit all these people I've never seen, I'm going to be like. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. That was just that would just be the and give him the, 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 you know, the wife look. You know what I mean? The wife look like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so kudos to you for being brave. I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it. It's worth it, though. You know, huh? it has been worth it. Definitely coming on a little loop around to meet you, Kristen. <laughs> 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 definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Well, this has been a great pleasure. Our 12-minute conversation is now on 17 minutes. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no need to be sorry. In closing, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching, and please support his journey. I know you have a GoFundMe. I do have a GoFundMe. I have a little present for you inside. Oh, really? <laughs> um, but please support his GoFundMe. You guys have no idea. As, as someone who travels yeah. and literally picks up their whole house and moves, y'all got no idea how much this stuff they costs. Yeah. You don't have a clue. Like, yeah. you have to remember, like, the government funds some of my stuff, right? <laughs> like, woo, thank goodness. But, you know, I'll give you guys an example. When we moved from Hawaii to here, the government only funds one car. Mm. There's two people, so there's two cars. So guess what? We got to pay out of pocket for one car to get shipped. Let me tell you, that's not cheap to ship a car from Hawaii to here. I would imagine. So the thing is, you guys see that he has a GoFundMe. Please support him on his mission. Yeah. Please support this. You guys, I know y'all watching. I know you see it. <laughs> I know you're following along. I know you're little stalkers. I know you're stalkers. <laughs> so go to the link. Go to his GoFundMe. Support this man. Because you guys have, seriously, you guys have no idea how much it costs. Like gas, hotel, trying to figure this stuff out, meet with people. Y'all yeah, lucky he's at my house. Okay? <laughs> like, we, you know, we didn't pay for all this little stuff for y'all See, but you guys are following along. You see what he's doing. You see the journey. What you don't see is the behind the scenes of the driving, the gas, the hotel, the food. All that stuff costs money for what he's doing. So please support it. him. Please support yeah, him. Yeah, it is challenging. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Kristen, this has been a great pleasure. Thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convoys with Angel Jones. Handshake. Did you Hi. have fun? I did. Kaboom. <laughs> <laughs>